So the answer to your question is yes, absolutely. You can get the Lee and Lee AL120 fans working with your Corsair controller and gain functionality over those fans using the Corsair IQ software. Now the very first thing you're gonna need is these uh, three pin RGB adapter. Anyways, once you have that cable and you know, you've got your Corsair controller installed. Now the controllers that you can use for this, there's uh, three of them that I'm aware of. It's the gonna be the old style Commander Pro the Commander Core XT, which we've looked at a lot on this channel, and a Lighting Node Pro. Uh, the Commander Core that comes with some of the AIOs will not work. It does not have any of those ports. So unfortunately, you won't be able to use that. What you're going to do is you're going to connect the three pin side to that RGB expansion port. And then you're going to connect in the motherboard sync cable for the Lee and Lee controller. Now, you will need to go ahead and set up your Lee and Lee fans if you haven't already. Just set them up as you normally would, even if you weren't using Corsair IQ. Snap them all together, get them connected to the controller, power this controller, and you know, get this connected to USB to your motherboard. You will still need to be able to talk to this controller. And then this comes with a sync cable that you can sync PWM fan control and you can sync RGB control. Uh, you will connect that. Now we'll talk in more detail about the PWM connection in just a minute because that presents a certain challenge with the Corsair controller. But the RGB, instead of connecting it to your motherboard, simply connect it to the cable that's connected to Corsair. That's the difference. That's what's going to give you the control here. So once you go ahead and get all of that set up and connected, just like you normally would, you will need to install the L-Connect version 2 or version 3 software from Lee and Lee. And it's from within that software that we're gonna put this controller into the motherboard sync mode. And if you haven't already, get the latest version of Corsair IQ installed. And let's go ahead and get started with the setup. So before we dive in and set up the Corsair IQ software, I wanna talk briefly about how IQ manages RGB lighting. And IQ uses uh, you know, the concept of a model. And a model is just a device, a fan, an RGB strip, one of the little triangles that we talked about recently. And that's what Corsair IQ is expecting. So any device that Corsair has ever made in the past, they've built a model for it in IQ. It's a fancy little graphic, you know, it shows the exact number of LEDs that are uh, you know, embedded in that device. And boom, you can set that up. It knows exactly how many there are and you can move them around and do all sorts of fancy stuff. Uh, Corsair is not intending for you to connect up non-Corsair products to this. That's the first obstacle that we got to deal with. Now the AL120 fan has 20 LEDs in it. Now, so I'm gonna back up for a second. Now, technically it has 28, you know, before anybody gets mad at me. Uh, 28, it has three in each quadrant. Each of the corner quadrants have three in it. The center hub on the front has eight and the center hub in the back has eight. However, the eight on the rear are not addressable. And so, but basically, once the front one lights, the, the rear one lights up the same color. It's kind of like they're just kind of a pair. So for purposes of setting this up in the IQ software, we need to match this model, you know, our AL120 fan, to a model that has 20 LEDs in Corsair. There is a, a couple of devices that will work with this. Now we're gonna talk about doing the three fans, which is gonna be 60 LEDs, but a lot of people are gonna have that fourth one because that's the max you could do. Now don't concern yourself if you're gonna use uh, four fan groups. Say you had 16 fans here. You, you don't need to set up all four different channels at once. Basically, you're just gonna set it up for whatever the max is on any one of the fan groups, and then the, the controller is just gonna fan that out to all of them. So we don't need to be concerned with each individual one. Let me go ahead and throw up a list here, and I'm not sure if this is a complete list, but it's as complete as I can get it. And this is gonna list all of the models in Corsair IQ and how many LEDs uh, there are on each one. So regardless of what non-Corsair device you're setting up here, you wanna to try to pick a device, because we gotta pick one of these in the Corsair IQ software. We have to pick one of their models and just to try to match it up here. So if we go back to our example on the bench here, I've got three AL120 fans, which each have 20 LEDs. So I need to select uh, models from Corsair that have at least 60 LEDs. The first place you're gonna go once you got this all hooked up is you need to open up the L-Connect software now, once that's loaded, the very first thing that we need to do 
is we just need to click the motherboard software sync here. So now Corsair can control it. So let's come over to the Corsair software. The first place you want to go is over here to three pin lighting effects. Now I'm using the Commander Core XT, uh, the Commander Pro and the Lighting Node Pro that you might use is, is going to show it like channel one and channel two lighting effects. Now here's where we need to tell it what model we're going to select. So if we just select the drop down box, if we go back to our list, and we, we need to find a model that divides, if possible, into 60. Ideally, if you're lucky, the device you're adding, there's a corresponding Corsair model that matches exactly. But in this case, there's not. There's not one that has 20 specifically. I think the closest match is going to be the RGB LED strips. Now, they only have 10, but I can select up to six of them and then represent this whole thing. Because if you think about how this actually works even that there's 60 leds here but just think of it as one you know strip just one strip of 60 leds and that's what we're trying to represent in corsair so let's go ahead and drop down to the rgb led strip and we're going to go ahead and select six now you'll notice here this is an important point that six is the max now the controller the corsair controller does have a maximum amount of LEDs that it will address. And so for the LED strips, it's six. Now, this is a good time to make this point here that if you had the fourth fan over here and you needed 80, the best I think I have found is the uh, LL RGB series fan because that has 16 LEDs. So if you take 80 and you divide it by 16, it's five. And so that divides equally, but as close as you can get it, uh, you, you know, to each individual model is the best. So if we go ahead and just select that, select six, that's all you need to do to get this working. And then come over here to lighting effects. I can select individual lights here. So if I go to custom, if I go to static color, now I've got all fans selected. So it's going to select all 60 uh, LEDs. But I can go ahead and I can just select a single LED. And I'm just selecting the very first one here on the first strip. And then if I keep going, you know, this is how you can kind of see where all the LEDs are. So if I go ahead and delete this, let's go back to lighting setup. Let's change the device. And actually, let's do eight LED series fan. Now we'll notice that not all the LEDs are lit, like the corner quadrants aren't lit. It looks like maybe the center hub is. So I think, yeah, 48 to 60 is uh, 12. So what we don't have lit with this uh, here is the, the corner quadrants and we'll, we would never get them lit with this setup. Now I recommend, you know, if you're, if, you're doing, if you're doing these here, just three, do the LED strips. If you're doing four fans, even if you're doing 16, choose the, uh, LL series fan and then play around with the lighting sequences and see how that looks. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about uh, PWM fan speed control. Now the cable that it uses for the PWM signal just has a single wire on it, meaning again, it only gets the PWM signal. Now if you plug that into a PWM port, it will not detect that there's a fan there because I think the Corsair controller is looking for the RPM feedback coming in to detect that there's something there and it is not getting any RPM feedback uh, from this here. So one solution I found that does work is to go ahead and use a splitter cable. And now this is a one port to three port uh, PWM fan cable. Plug this into the port and now the three connectors on the end of this, one of them has four pins and the other two have three. Now, what that's intended for is that only one of these is going to get an RPM feedback from the fan. And so in that port, you want to connect an actual real live fan. So you want to connect, you know, one of your Corsair fans here, uh, if you're using those, I'm assuming you are. And then in this other port, even though it's only got three pins, connect in the Lee and Lee PWM connector. Now what that will do is then the Corsair controller will see a fan here. It's seeing the Corsair fan in this example we're talking about, but then it will kick out a PWM signal to the rest of these ports. 
then the Lee and Lee controller can get that PWM signal and then you can control that through Corsair IQ. But at this point, the Lee and Lee controller is controlling all the power, you're just sending the speed signal to it and it's just fanning it out to all of the fans on there. All right, so anyways, we've plugged this in. We've got this fan running the Corsair. I don't have any RGB set up on that yet. But now I've got a cooling option here. I've got just one option, fan port one, which is what I'm connected to. But now I'm, I'm getting the feedback from this Corsair fan, which is just in a zero RPM mode. It's still running, but, but if I put it in extreme, but now it should go ahead and run these at, the, at full tilt. It's elevated a little bit, but it's not perfect. I still, I don't feel like we're getting the maximum RPM out of the QL fan with this solution. Okay, so as I mentioned, I wasn't able to get the maximum RPM rating out of this AL120 fan. The fan that I've got connected to the four pin PWM connector is a Corsair LL120 fan and it's rated for a maximum RPM of 1500. I kind of thought when I used the extreme fan curve in Corsair IQ, it would go ahead and give me the maximum rating of both of those, but it clearly does not do that. The maximum I was ever able to get is uh, 1650. Now the maximum RPM rating for the Lee and Lee fan is 1900. So after a little bit of playing around with this uh, and some testing, uh, I've discovered that you must use a custom fan curve. And so basically in Corsair IQ, you're just gonna click the plus sign, select a you know custom, custom one, you can name it whatever you want. And then using a fixed percentage, fixed RPM, or a custom curve, uh, I was able to get uh, the maximum RPM range out of this uh, Lee and Lee fan. So anyways, this solution still works great. That just threw me off a little bit. Uh, use a custom fan curve and it'll work just fine. All right, so now that we've got this all working, uh, I encourage you to play with all the different models and make sure it looks good in your case and have fun with it and see what looks the best. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and run through a montage here of all of the Corsair lighting uh, sequences. Uh, put all these fans on a rack. The bottom fans here are also non-Corsair fans. And so we can mix and match all of these together using this very same sequence and just, or this very same setup of using these uh, adapter cables. So. Enjoy those lighting sequences and I'll see you back here in a minute. There you have it. If you were wondering if the Lee and Lee AL120 fans would hook up to a Corsair controller and allow you to get functionality and control over it with the Corsair IQ software, yes, you can. Uh, it's not very difficult. You just need that little adapter cable and possibly the PWM splitter so that you can get some uh, speed control over it. Overall, it's easy to do. The biggest obstacle you're going to run into possibly is what we just talked about, and that's getting the model in Corsair to most closely match the setup that you have. Now, if you're using just three of these uh, AL120 fans, 
It's perfect. You know, use six of the LED strips in Corsair and it breaks really nicely across all of those. And if you happen to use four fans or another fan altogether that doesn't divide nicely into there, just experiment around with it until you get something that looks really good. And really the only animation you're probably going to notice it on is visor. Uh, the rest of them, yeah, it doesn't really matter. It just applies it, you know, to all the fans anyways, and it looks great. So overall, uh, when I've hooked up non-Corsair fans to my Corsair setup, I'm always pleased with how it looks. It's, it's relatively simple to do, and I think it looks great. It, uh, you know, they fit right in. So it's a great way to get some control. And then, you know, just using the L-Connect software, you can turn that motherboard sync off and you can go back to the native control because uh, there, you know, there are some uh, lighting schemes in the Lee and Lee software that look really, really good. And same with these cheap Alzai fans. Uh, you know, the, the controller does some native looks on that that look really good. So anyways, uh, that's going to do it for today. If you have any questions or comments, put it in the comment section below. I'm happy to answer those and help out uh, where I can and when I can. And that is going to do it for today. Thank you for watching.